All right, we're going to move into our next <laughs> our next projections, and that is for the, I guess, what feels like he might be the oldest uh, Blue Jay on the roster now, at thirty four years age years of age, and he is not, but he is the newest Blue Jay, Brandon Belt. Uh, coming off of knee wonkiness and and all of that stuff, hoping to be healthy. He says he's healthy and ready to go, and that's awesome because didn't have necessarily the best season last year, obviously uh, limited due to injury. So, Karen, let's first talk about what do you see as his role in 2023? Is it just DH or is it really just fill in when Vladdy's not uh, on first base? Um, I mean, in his in his introductory press conference, he said the, that the Blue Jays told him that he would be spending a, a good bit of time at DH, but that there could be times when he would fill in for Vlad at first base when, when he needs a day off of there or whatever. So, yeah, I, I can see that being around 80% DH, 80 to 85% DH, and maybe... 15% backup first baseman. Yeah, yeah. Um, Steve, a couple of things for you. You, We've had, in this podcast, we've had a lot of conversation about the need for that veteran leadership presence. Um, and I know you're a big proponent of that. Mm -hmm. So does Brandon Belt fit that, given his um, massive, extensive um, experience, postseason experience in particular, with the Giants? Well, he does fill the role of veteran leader. Um, I. It doesn't mean that he's going to be productive. And I, I think you have to draw the line there. I mean, I, you know, Brandon Belt needs regular at bats in order for him to excel. The years that he has had good numbers, he has had a significant amount of at bats. The years that he struggled with injuries, you know, he he is not. And, and the and the power production and the average, it's not necessarily due to the injuries. It's just that he does not excel uh, if he's not getting regular at-bats and does not get into a groove. So certainly in the locker room, certainly working with young guys, I'm, I'm sure that he's going to be a valuable asset for Vladdy uh, as far as, you know, improving, continue to improve his reads of balls off the bat over at first base, things like that. But I mean, I, I know that I'm, I'm in the minority here, but I really think Brandon Belt is a, a non-factor for the most part offensively. Interesting. So let's dive into that. Karen, when you look at um, Brandon Belt, it's difficult because over the last couple of seasons, um, he's only gotten into 97 games in 2021 and then 78 in 2022. So I want to look at his career marks here, Karen, just to, as a general place to start. When you look at his on-base percentage, his career on-base percentage is 356. He's a career weighted runs created plus of 124. Let's go to his OPS. His career OPS is 814. So, Karen... How do I say that? Are you expecting that? Is that a would that be a pleasant surprise, or would that just be pretty much what you thought you were going to get from Brandon Belt? Um, that that's about what I've been projecting for him. As as you know, I mean, I wrote about him. I've thought about it a fair bit. I've really looked at his stats up and down, as well as uh, let's not forget his age, because at some point, Father Time catches up to all of us, and, and whether the bat speed declines a little bit or whatever. I, I mean, obviously, every Blue Jays fan would love to see the Brandon Belts that there was in 2020 and 2021. I'm not expecting that. I think I would be getting my hopes up too high to say that. But I look at the numbers that you just say, his career averages, and, and I can see him doing something around those numbers. So, you know, split the difference between the amazing year he had in 2021 and the injury plague year he had last year. And, and you're looking at about his career average. So, I'm hopeful that he can do that as well. Having, I, I mean, I see him honestly as the DH a majority of the time. I, I don't think they're going to do, I don't think they would have brought Brandon Belt onto this team if they weren't planning on utilizing him. 
So I think he's going to get a good number of at-bats. And I think we'll see someone who's productive, hopefully, and again, helping to round out that lineup the way they keep saying they want left-handed hitters, they want left-handed hitters work. Here's a left-handed hitter who's been pretty good in his career. So let's hope he has at least another one or two good years left mm. with the bad as with the leadership. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope he has a couple of good good years left, his knees. Those are the tires that I'm hoping don't blow out on them. Um, but Steve, yeah. Karen said somewhere between his 2021 and his 2022. So when I look at those, 2021, his OPS was 975. In 2022, his OPS was 676, which is about a 300-point difference. Take off 150 points from 2021, and that puts you at 825. Is that an accurate, a fair OPS kind of projection for because i because i will note his projections his actual projections are different but in your mind is an 825 ops is that a fair expectation no well i mean i expectation is one thing mm -hmm. uh i think what re, on the field results are totally different and there's a difference between a left-handed hitter and a hitter that bats left-handed. And I think at this point in his career, Brandon Belt is a hitter that bats left-handed. He's not a left-handed hitter that's going to make an impact on, you know, on a lineup. I, I mean, it's not like the Giants have a lot of uh, possibilities uh, at first base in their system. Uh, certainly the guys they have down there have not really done well when they come, came up to the majors. So if they felt there was something left in the tank, I'm pretty sure that uh, Zahidi w would have found a way to get Belt you know, onto that roster, especially after it turned out they weren't going to get Aaron Judge and after they were one of the 650 teams that did not sign Carlos Correa. So uh, you know, I would think that, um, again, I I'm not as big on strict analytics, but there are guys that apply that information without going too crazy. And I think Zahidi and his staff do that in San Francisco. So that, to me, was another indication that Brandon Belt was, was going to be an overpriced addition. And he's not going to produce to that salary. All right. So that leads us to then the ultimate question. We're going to go to the over and under. Last season, Brandon Belt put up 0, 0.0 wins above replacement. Uh, 3.4 in 2021. He's projected at Steamer has him at 0 0.6 wins above replacement. Karen, do you take the over or the under on his wins above replacement? Over. Right. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <that> his projections. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know wonder. why they're called Steamer. They get people steamed up. <laughs> 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 well done. Well done. All right, Steve, do you take the over or the under on 0 0.6 wins above replacement? You can't take a push on this, I guess. Um, I, I think that's a pretty fair projection of his war. Um, I'm going to go under just because I'm a jerk. So I'm, I'm so I, I'm going to go under on it uh, because I really don't, I, you know, I am just not sold. This is just, just the wrong mm -hmm. fit. Right. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to take the over um, and I'm doing so because his offense will be fine. It's got uh, positive value there when he's used. That's not, but they have his defense as questionable and I don't think he'll play that much defense for it to be, um, that much of a, a factor. So that for that reason alone, the defensive numbers are hurting that that F war. So I'm going to go ahead and take the over on that. Uh, and I'm also going to go ahead and remind everybody that the BetStamp app allows you to line shop for the best place and the best price to put your money down. And you can follow winning bettors, see what they're doing, increase your game, all by downloading the BetStamp app at the App Store, Google Play, and use the code JFTC when you do, and you can start betting like a pro.